Okay, so let's start today coming into a seated position of your choice. You can take a mudra or just let the hands rest to the knees, whatever feels best for you. Lifting your spine up nice and tall, take a lovely deep breath in through the nose. And as you sigh, you can close your eyes. Let's do that a few more times, breathing in through the nose. Sighing through the mouth. And each time you do this, you want to feel the spine engaging, lifting up to the sky with your inhale breath. And as you sigh, you're going to relax the neck, the shoulders, the jaw, the hips, the thighs. And eventually coming into a more natural breath through the nose. Starting to activate into your ujjayi. Bringing the breath awareness into the 360 degree alignment of the rib cage, pushing the ribs forward, sideways, and back. Becoming aware of the diaphragm just below the ribs. The diaphragm drops down to expand the lungs and then lifts up to compress them. And as you become aware of the diaphragmatic movement, you start to connect into the abdominal muscles a little bit more. bringing your awareness to Uddiyana Bandha, that's just below the belly button. In the triangular group of muscles between the belly button, the hips and the pubic bone. Feeling this light engagement into the lower abdominal area. So there's no restriction of breath, there's no intensity of hold. You just feel that light activation to create a sense of stability and space. Shifting your awareness now to the muscles right at the bottom of the torso in the pelvic floor. These muscles are a diaphragm, just like the ones underneath the rib cage. So you want to gently lift into these diaphragm muscles. And again, you feel a sense of stability and support. Not squeezing them so hard that you start to fatigue or to cause tension. And so your Uddiyana and Mula Bandhas, we try to keep active, but we don't lock throughout the practice. Just like the diaphragm amongst the ribs, you want to feel the ebb and flow of activation and release. Learning to relax these muscles is as important as learning to activate them. And once you have your ujjayi flowing, your bandhas active, bring your awareness now to the space between your eyebrows so that you're gazing inwardly and upwardly at the third eye center. and setting your intention for today's practice. Your intention might focus on your actual practice, being gentle, 
being focused. Your intention might be more energetic, bringing in compassion or love, maybe sending out compassion or love. Creating a visual image of your intention and then feeling it swirl around the energy of your body and the energy that surrounds your body. Let's lower your chin to your chest now, blinking eyes open and inhaling to lift back up. Coming over into downward facing dog to start today's practice. So keeping the knees bent, taking the tension out of your down dog and start to create some lovely sliding movements. Heel, toe the feet up and down. Let your hips twist from one side to the other, letting your torso twist from one side to the other. And you can take any movement that feels good for you here. So maybe close your eyes, not worry about what you should be doing. And just start to think about how the body wants to be moved. Maybe you want to roll forward into plank and then lift yourself back into a downward facing dog. Maybe you want to come down into a sort of upward facing dog, opening the heart arching the back. Focus on the parts of the body that you feel are tight. Maybe it's your neck, your shoulders, maybe it's undulating your spine, maybe the hips are tight, maybe the hamstrings are tight. Maybe you want to float a leg to the sky and work through your ankle. taking any sort of movement that your body responds to naturally. As big or as small as you are inclined to move today. A lot of what our yoga practice is about is becoming intuitive to our body's needs. And once you are ready and you feel like you've got a nice depth of movement, make your way back to your downward facing dog. Let's look between the hands and take little steps to the front of your mat, keeping the legs as straight as you can manage and then opening up the heart into flat back. Working to undulate the spine now, ripple the body down to the mat, forward fold, and then ripple the body back up, flat back. You're going to do this a few times, exhaling down and inhaling up. One more time, rippling down, and then bending the knees to roll up. Coming to stand in your Tadasana. On the inhale breath, flow the hands overhead, and exhale to forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale to fold. Stepping the right leg into lunge, squeeze the back thigh, open the heart, and inhaling into plank. Let's lower knees, chest, and chin, sliding into cobra, and exhaling into downward facing dog. 
Take two rounds of breath here. Inhale the right leg up and exhale stepping forward into lunge. Inhale together, flush back and exhale to fold. Inhale, reaching hands up to the sky. Let's come straight back down into forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale to fold. Stepping left leg into lunge, squeeze the back thigh, open the heart, and inhale into plank. Exhaling knees, chest, and chin, and sliding forward into cobra. Exhaling back, downward facing dog. Inhale, taking the leg to the sky and stepping the foot forward into lunge. Inhale together, flat back. And exhale to forward fold. Inhale, reaching the hands up to the sky. Let's take it straight back down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, step or hop yourself back into plank. Let's lower knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. And downward facing dog. On an inhale breath, taking the right leg to the sky and stepping the foot forward into warrior one. Lift out of the lumbar spine. Let's exhale, hands to the mat, stepping back into plank and lowering chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. Up dog or cobra and downward facing dog. Let's inhale the left leg to the sky and stepping the foot forward into lunge. Sorry, into warrior one, my apologies opening up the heart. Square the hips, lift the spine, and then exhale, lowering down, making your way through a vinyasa. And back into downward facing dog. Take a few breaths here. On the inhale breath, bend your knees, slide your hips up and back, looking between the hands, walk, step or hop, flat back. And exhale to fold. Inhale, sweeping hands up to the sky. Let's come straight back down, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift and exhale to fold. Stepping the right leg into lunge and inhale, lifting, high lunge. Lift up out of the lower back, squeeze into the thighs. Inhale, hands together at the heart and twist, bringing right elbow to left knee. Press your elbow firmly against your thigh to help rotate the chest. If you've got space, you are welcome to bring the right hand to the outer edge of the foot and the left hand to the sky. On the exhale, releasing hands either side of the front foot and you're going to now lift your left leg up and back, three-legged dog. Open up the hip. Square your shoulders and float those toes to the sky. Let's exhale, knee to face, face to knee. Inhale to lift. Exhale, knee to left upper arm. 
Inhale to lift. Exhale to right upper arm. And inhale to lift. Exhale, step the foot forward into lunge. Inhale together, flat back. Exhale to forward fold. Bending knees, reaching hands to the sky, Utkatasana. Lengthen lower back, squeeze inner thighs, and sit a little bit deeper. Let's inhale all the way up. And exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale to fold. Stepping the left leg into lunge. And inhale, high lunge. Lift your back heel. Lift the pubic bone. Bring hands together at the heart. And twisting, left elbow over right thigh. Stay as you are, or bring the left hand to the outer edge of the front foot and the right hand to the sky. Exhale, release both hands to the floor and step your right foot up, three legged dog. Trying to spread the bottom heel and the top toes in opposite directions. Exhale, knee to face, face to knee. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to right upper arm. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to left upper arm. Inhale, lift. Exhale, step the foot forward into lunge and inhale together, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling Utkatasana, bend your knees, reaching hands up. And then drawing the hands together. <coughs> You may want to step one foot back, away from the front of the mat, so you've got some space here. We're going to lift up onto the toes, and then draw the heels together, the knees wide, as you slowly come down to sit onto the heels. Lift your torso into toe balance. <coughs> Bringing the hands to the floor in front of you. Lift your heels even higher and get the knees to the back of the upper arms. We're working towards Bakasana here. Draw the elbows towards each other, open the shoulder blades wide. Maybe you want to just practice by taking one foot off the mat. And maybe you feel comfortable to take both feet off. From here, you're going to walk, step, or hop yourself. Chaturanga. And inhale, upward dog. Let's take it back. Downward facing dog. Take a few moments in your down dog. Maybe you prefer to come into child's pose. On your inhale breath, let's float the right leg to the sky. And step the foot forward, warrior two. <clears throat> Sink the hips down, square the hips, and slide your front knee deeper, your back thigh further away. Moving into Parsvakanasana, elbow to thigh, top arm over the ear. If you feel comfortable to go deeper, bring your bottom hand to your ankle, pressing your upper arm against your inner knee. If you still have space to go deeper, bring the hand to the floor, pressing your upper arm even tighter against that knee. If the shoulders are open, you can take a half bind, 
or even a full bind. Lean back against that inner thigh. Look down at your front big toe and start to straighten your front leg. Let's re-bend into that front knee and then release your hand to the floor, top arm to the sky. Look in front of the big toe this time and slide your right hand all the way forward and open to the right for your half moon balance. Kick your heel away, reach your head forward, float into this position. Maybe you want to attempt the sugarcane pose by bending the top knee and holding to your foot. Opening the heart, kicking the foot away from you here. Let's release the leg, take the hand up, and now rotate yourself into warrior three. You may want to bring both hands to the mat for support or bring your hands to your heart. Kick heel and head away from one another. Float into the torso. Let's engage those bundles as we bring the back knee up to the chest. And working now into eagle balance, wrapping the top leg around the bottom. Let's bring the left arm under the right. One more deep breath. Releasing from here, coming back, chair pose. Hold into your chair, squeeze those inner thighs. Sit a little bit deeper. Let's bring the hands together at the heart. Again, if you're very far towards the front of the mat, take one step back to make a bit of space. Let's come up onto the toes, heels touching, knees wide, and sitting the hips down into toe balance. Open up through the torso. Taking this into Bakasana for a second round. Spread the hands wide. Grip your fingertips into the mat to protect the wrist joints. Lift your knees to the upper arms. Wrap the elbows in towards one another, making a little shelf for you to balance on. Reach your head forward, so not down, but forward. Maybe floating one foot off, maybe floating two. Let's walk, step or hop. Chaturanga. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Deep sigh. Child's pose or down dog are all appropriate here. Let's inhale the left leg to the sky and step the foot forward, warrior two. Find your balance, find your alignment. Let's drop forward into Pasva, elbow to thigh, stretching the top arm over ear. If there's space, bring the hand to the inside of the ankle. If there's still space, bring the hand to the inside of the foot. You have the option of taking a half bind or a full bind. Lean back against that inner thigh. Turning your gaze down at your toe and straighten the front leg. Keep leaning back here. Try not to let the top shoulder roll to the floor 
but rather open it to the sky. Let's re-bend the front knee, release the bottom hand, take the top arm to the sky, and now setting up for your half moon balance, Ardha Trandasana. Extend your body in opposite directions. Maybe taking sugar cane by holding to the top foot or staying in your regular half moon balance. From here, start to straighten out and we're going to rotate the hips and the heart parallel to the floor into warrior three. Make sure the torso is really active. The leg is really active. Engaging bandhas, float your way up into Garandasana. Taking the right arm under the left this time. From here, let's release into Utkatasana. Working the thighs, sitting the hips low, neutral lower back. On your inhale, stand up and then exhale forward fold. Heel toe the feet open, hip distance parallel, interlocking fingers around the big toes. Lift your spine forward on your inhale breath and then deeply fold on the exhale. Legs can be bent, soft or straight. Make the neck a little bit longer. Flick your tailbone to the sky and elongate the whole back body. Let's inhale, halfway lift, and then taking it a bit deeper into our Tadahastasana, by now stepping onto the fingertips, or maybe even onto the palms. Lengthen on the inhale, and fold on the exhale. On the inhale, releasing. Place your hands flat to the mat. Bend your knees if you need to, to get your hands perfectly flat on the floor. We're now going to shift the weight forward onto the hands, lifting the heels. Plug more weight into those hands. Feel as though you could lift yourself into a handstand, engaging into the core. Spread the shoulders. And then from here, walk, step, or hop yourself, downward facing dog. From your down dog, round your back, coming forward into a plank. And you're going to make your way into a side plank. Either side is fine to begin. So you choose which side you want to start on. You can stack the feet one in front of the other, one on top of the other, or if you'd like to, come into a starfish. Let's gently release, come back to your plank. If you need to drop the knees down for a moment, you can. And when you're ready, take it to the other side. coming back to plank. Let's lower all the way down to the floor, knees, chest, or chaturanga. And bring the hands under the forehead for a moment, 
few deep breaths. Remember, a deep sigh is available to you at any stage. On your inhale breath, come back up onto your elbows into Sphinx Pose. Check that the elbows are under the shoulders. The hands are open parallel, so the middle fingers are parallel. Now drag your elbows into the mat as you lift the chest. So it's not lifting the neck and the chin, but lifting the chest. Feel as though your sternum is uh, magnetically attracted to the chin, opening up the heart. If you feel comfortable, you can float the elbows off the floor for a bit more activation into the spine. Keep drawing those elbows into the rib cage and puffing the heart open. You're going to release yourself all the way back down to the mat, different hand on top and forward to the hands. Coming back up onto elbows for Sphinx and we're going to move into our Ardha Bikasana which is the half frog pose. So turn your left hand slightly in, bending your right knee. Hold onto the top of your right foot and you start to draw your heel in towards the side of the glute. So not to the sacrum but to the hip. If you've got space in the shoulder, you can turn your elbow to face up and your fingers to face forward. Be mindful to not collapse into the front body. You're lifting the front body and you're engaging into that quad at the same time. And then gently releasing from there. Come down to the floor, different hand on top and rest. Take it to the other side, coming up onto the elbows in Sphinx. Bring the right hand slightly in and then holding to the left foot. Find the correct hand alignment for you. Lift your chest and extend that quad all at the same time. gently releasing from there. This time bring the hands under the shoulders. We're going to slide into a child's pose just for a few breaths as release but I want to keep this back warm. And then roll the spine to come up. Moving into our Triang Mukha Pashimottanasana. By keeping your right knee bent and extending your left leg forward. It's very important that you're on the top of the foot and the toes are pointing backwards, not to the side. You don't want to place strain on the ankle. If you have very tight hamstrings, sit, sit on a pillow or open the knee out to 45 degrees. So we're gonna work on our forward fold here. And so this forward fold is very different to our regular forward fold where it's the hamstring that's activating. 
Here we've got to work with the tightness of the quad. And most people, even people who do yoga every day like myself, have quite tight quads. So just breathe into the space. Don't expect to get all the way down. And find freedom in this movement. On your inhale, come back up to sit and we're going to move into Kranchasana now. Bend your front leg, holding onto the ball of the foot. Make sure you're sitting on the sitting bones and then float your heel up with your knee. Straighten your spine by sliding the heel energetically forward. If the hamstring is long, you can take the leg up. If it's not, then keep the knee bent and focus on the lengthening of the spine. Moving into our twisted half lotus now, bend your knee out to the side of the ribcage. So you're pulling that knee back and wide, opening that hip. From here, bring the foot to the groin. If you can't do this because the knee or the ankle is giving you pain, bring your foot to the inner thigh. We're now going to twist to the left and see if we can bring the left fingers to hold onto that top toe. and returning to center. Release the foot, draw the knee to the chest, and then extend the leg forward. Take your right knee to your chest, so you're rotating the hip joint, and then straighten the leg. So at no stage is that knee twisting. Let's come into our regular Pashimo, lifting up tall and exhale to forward fold. and inhale to lift. Let's now take the left knee into the chest and rotate to bring the foot next to the hip. Slide the calf muscle just a little bit open to allow more space. And again, make sure the hip bones are square. Sometimes you just need the corner of a blanket underneath one hip to um, even out the, the alignment there. Let's come into our Triang Mukha, inhale, and exhale forward fold so now you get a good indication of the difference between Pashimo and Triang Mukha Pashimo we could have released so much deeper into this pose here we feel that restriction so make sure to soften and release wherever you're feeling tightness On your inhale, coming back up to sit. Moving into Krunchasana now. Bend the front knee, hold to the ball of the foot. Lift your heel and your knee in line here. So it's nice to take a pause in this position to really get length into that spine and then straighten the hamstring. As always, we're trying to keep the chest open the shoulder blades receding into the back body and the lengthening of the sternum. Ah. Moving into our Ardha Padmasana. Let's open the knee out nice and wide. Feel how that hip joint is extending here. Really plug it back behind the rib cage. And then when you are ready, you can come either to the half lotus position or bring the foot to the inner thigh. Inhale and exhale to twist. Sometimes it's not possible to hold on to the big toe, that's fine. Either wrap your hand into your waist, 
hold onto your hip joint or even just bring the back of your hand to your lower back. And now returning to center. We're going to take the right leg in first and straighten, left leg in next and straighten. Sitting tall into Dandasana, hands next to the hips. Kick your heels out, reach your head up. Feel as though your belly button is moving towards the upper thigh. And now we're going to move into our full uh, reclining saddle pose. So bringing both feet next to the hips. Rolling the calf muscles out. Depending on how this feels, again, you might want to sit onto oh, cramp. <laughs> Sometimes I get cramped in the extension of the top of the foot here. If that happens to you, just tuck the toes for a moment. It generally goes away quite quickly. So you might want to sit on a pillow here, especially if your hips don't touch the floor comfortably. Sit on a pillow. You can choose to either just lean back and then open up the heart. This might be enough for you. Maybe you want to come down onto the elbows. You can still come down if you're on the pillow, but as long as it's a small pillow, if you're needing a lot of support, then don't come down too far. If you feel comfortable to come all the way onto your back, you can do that and maybe even bring the hands overhead. There is an arch in the lower back here. Try to reduce the arch in a natural motion. So we don't want to overextend into the lower back. Take a few deep breaths. When you're ready to come out of the pose, bring elbows to the floor, lifting up, hands to the floor, lifting up. Walk your hands out in front of you. And we're going to very slowly make your way into downward facing dog. So the joints might feel a little bit tender. So move slowly and mindfully. Give your blood time to flow back down through the tourniquet effects over the knees and the ankles. Maybe you want to heel toe the legs a few times. And when you are ready, come into your still Adho Mukha Svarasana and hold for a few breaths. Let's drop the knees to the floor here. And you're going to choose to either work into a dolphin pose or into a headstand. So dolphin pose, or the head will be off the floor. Headstand, you're holding lightly behind the skull with the crown of the head on the floor. Checking the alignment of the elbows, you can get the fingers to the outside edges of your biceps. So that's the same alignment for either headstand or dolphin. Again, for both postures, you'll lift the shoulders away from the ears, lifting the hips off the mat. You want to now try and rock your weight onto your forearms, coming onto the toes. Maybe you float a leg up, maybe you float two legs up. See how it feels. If you're in your dolphin pose, come down into child's pose at any point and then lift up to meet again and switch the legs around. 
There is no weight on the neck either way. The weight is in the forearms and the shoulders are actively lifting to the sky. The legs are actively lifting to the sky. Play around with the pose, come in, come out as many times as you need to. And when you are ready, come down with control and make your way into child's pose. Let's hold into our balasana for a few moments. Inhale to roll yourself back up to sit and then swing the legs out in front of you. Straighten the legs, bring your elbows to the mat with the fingertips just behind the, uh, the glutes. Wrap your elbows underneath your ribcage so they are parallel with the shoulders. And now start to press into the hands open up the chest and let your head hang back. Really puff open through that heart center. Let's bring the chin back to the chest and then lower yourself the rest of the way down to the floor taking your knees into your ribs. Flatten your back completely against the mat here. Pressing the back of the skull, the shoulder blades, the upper back, middle back, lower back, and even the tailbone. maintaining this activation against the floor as you now open into Ananda Balasana. Maybe you enjoy rocking in your happy baby pose and maybe you prefer holding still. Draw the knees in together again. And you can take any reclining twists that you like. I'm working into a double leg twist today. Dropping over to the right and extending the left arm to the side. Take a deep breath in and sigh. Do that again if it feels good.
return to the center and over to the other side. Again, a lovely deep breath in and sigh. Return to the center now, hug the knees into the chest one last time. And then making your way into a well-deserved Shavasana. Out any little kinks, discomforts. Finding your space of ultimate relaxation. Soft jaw, soft tongue. Smoothing out the muscles between your eyebrows, around your skull, and into your neck.
slowly start to deepen and lengthen your breath. Running your thumb over the tips of your fingers, moving your toes, ankles, and wrists. Drawing your feet together and extending your arms overhead, yawning or sighing, bending your knees and rolling onto your side in a fetal position. Holding here for a moment. And then lifting into a comfortable seated position. Bringing your hands together at your heart center in Anjali Mudra. Close the class by chanting Om Man Sin Shanti three times. Taking a deep breath in. Raising our hands to your third eye. The light in me sees and honors the light in you. Lowering your hands to your lips, to your heart, and to your mat, bowing forward in recognition of your practice. Blinking eyes open. Inhaling to lift. Namaste.